Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create quick and easy curly bracket frames in Illustrator. Before we start with the video tutorial, let's see what it is that we're aiming to achieve. What we're going to do is to create a curly bracket frame just like this. And what I've got underneath is an offset version of the same frame filled with a solid color. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And here's another one similar in style. I'm going to choose File and then New and create a brand new document. Doesn't matter too much how big it is. And then I'm going to select the text tool. I want this type tool here. I'm just going to click and type a curly bracket. And then I'm going to select it and let's just make it a bit bigger so that we can see it a little more clearly. What I'm looking for in the font that I'm using is that this inner curve is an attractive shape. So I could go through my fonts right now and see what looks good. I happen to know that Old English text looks particularly good, so I'm just going to use that. But you could go and select any text font that you wanted to use that has a good internal shape. Having done that, I'm going to select the font character with the direct selection tool and choose type create outlines. What that does is turns the type into a illustrator path. Now what we want to do is to go to the eraser tool and locate it. Well, what we're looking for is the tool that shares a position with the eraser tool. It's the scissors tool. So I'm just going to click on the scissors tool. And now let's just zoom into this shape. And with the scissors tool, I just want to cut the path at this inside anchor point. So I'm going to hold my mouse over the point until I locate the anchor point and click to break the path at that point. I'll hold the space bar and just move down to pick up the second anchor point that I need to break, making sure again I'm using the scissor tool, hover my mouse pointer over there until it says anchor and click to break it at that point. Let's just zoom back out to see what we have. And you can see that I've been successful in breaking this path apart because right now what we see around this edge is just the anchor points on the outside of the shape. The inner ones are not selected. That means if I now press the delete key, I'm going to remove the entire unwanted path. And what I'm left with is the path that I do want. Now it's a filled path, but that's very easy to solve. With the direct selection tool, I'll select on the path I'm going to add a stroke to it and I'm going to remove its fill. And you can see here that now we have this bracket shape. Just going to drag it over here. We need four versions of this. So I'm going to start with Object Transform Reflect because I want one that's reflected over the vertical axis. I'm going to click Copy because that gives me two of these paths. I'm going to drag the first away from the second by holding the Shift key as I do it. Let's go back to this shape and create two more. This time I'll choose Object, Transform, Rotate. I want this one to be rotated through 90 degrees, but I'd like the original as well, so I'll click Copy. And that gives me the original and a duplicate that's rotated 90 degrees. And now I want to reflect this one back up here, Object, Transform, Reflect. I'm going to reflect over the horizontal axis and click Copy so I make a copy not moving the original. So now I'm going to place these shapes so that they are going to make a frame shape. With the Direct Selection tool, I'm just going to move them into position so that they intersect with each other. I'm looking for the intersect confirmation here. I'm not seeing it down here, so I'm just going to go and see if I can do something a bit better, getting a little bit closer. I want these two paths to intersect if they can. Then I'll hold the space bar as I move across and actually let's zoom out a bit so that we can get this last shape into position. 
using the direct selection tool which I can select by pressing the letter V and again I'm looking for these paths to intersect. Now in the past I've had difficulty with Illustrator joining paths like this together so I have opted to use a script and the script that I'm going to use is called Join Reasonably and you can find that on the web. Just look up Illustrator Scripts Join Reasonably and if you're unsure how to create a script have a look at my video on scripting in Illustrator. So now I'm going to select the select direct selection tool, select over the entire path and we'll run this script. File scripts and I'm going to choose the script that's called join reasonably. Here it is. And now this shape should be joined into a single shape. And as I said, it seems that this script does a whole lot better job than Illustrator itself. I'm just going to size this a little bit out because I want it to be a little bit more rectangular than square and now I'm going to duplicate it so I'll select the shape and choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place. That creates a second version of the frame or that sort of curly look and I'm going to move it to an offset position. Let's go to the Layers palette so we can identify which of these is in the back because that's the one that's going to be filled with a solid fill. Now I have some cooler colour schemes that I've located that I want to use. So I'm searching here for vintage colour and I'm going to go and grab one of the colour schemes kind of like this one here. So I'm just going to add it to the swatches panel. Then we'll go and get the swatches panel so that we can use these newly added colours. With the frame selected and the fill color targeted, I'm just going to click on one of these colors to fill my shape with that color. And now I don't want a stroke on this particular one, so I'm going to get rid of the stroke. And now I have my frame, a black frame, and an offset fill. And that is as easy as it is to create curly brace frames in Illustrator. I suggest that you find and download the script Join Reasonably because it does such a good job of joining shapes together and you now have the ability to create these wonderful frames yourself in a matter of minutes. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be advised when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.